Halo Outpost Discovery is a Halo-themed traveling roadshow that I had the chance to check out with some of my friends. Whether you're interested in going or just want to know more about it, here's a brief rundown of what to expect inside of the event. First up, the shooting range. The website advertises this as a chance to check out some UNSC and Covenant weapons and shoot at targets. The reality is these are just Nerf guns based on the SMG and pistol. The actual shooting range is a screen that you shoot at and hope that your gun hits well enough to register as a point. Reload times are terrible. I chose the SMG. You probably shouldn't do that. On the completely opposite end of the spectrum is Pelican Training, one of the coolest things at the venue. Eight people go in and have to work together to solve the challenges of a crisis. They really did a good job on making the interior of a Pelican for people to sit in and actually have to work through, so great job on this one. For those who enjoy playing with off-brand LEGO products, the Mega Constructs Halo series was available to play with on-site, plenty of Halo builds available to try out for yourself. Halo Fireteam Raven is an on-rails arcade shooter available to play at the venue, definitely worth checking out, up to four players can sit together inside of an arcade booth and shoot down Flood and Covenant enemies to your heart's content, or at least until the mission's over. The good news is this game is actually available at arcades around the country and internationally, so go check it out for yourself. Next up is the combat deck. This is hands down the coolest thing that they had on site. This is a 20 versus 20 big team battle themed laser tag, but the guns actually work like they do in Halo. You have multiple rounds that you shoot at each other and everybody happens to have armor, which eventually drains and plays the iconic Halo beeping sound effect. You have to hide until your shields recharge and then you can go back into the action. You have to constantly reload your weapon just like in the games and if you die, you have to go back to your spawn point, aim at your sensor bar until you can respawn three seconds later. Later. This is seriously like the best thing that they had to offer. Super recommend it. Do not miss out on the combat deck. This is so freaking cool. Even if you've played laser tag before, this is honestly Halo laser tag, and even the guns are custom themed, so it's really worth checking out. If you're a fan of panels, there weren't a whole lot to check out, but they did have Master Chief and Cortana's actors, Steve Downs and Jen Taylor, come on stage to do a Q&A session, both with an interviewer and with the crowd. They also had several people in Spartan armor come through to celebrate the actors and make their presence known for all attendees. Halo Outpost Discovery also features an escape room called Covenant Escape. This is a short but simple escape room that takes you through the insides of a Covenant ship. Definitely worth checking out. When we did it, we ran into a lot of problems with technical difficulties, but the actual solving of puzzles was very easy, so the only thing that ever held us up was waiting for the people running the machine to keep things moving. Just like with the Pelican training, this is all about listening for instructions and communicating with your team so that you can do things in a timely manner. Unfortunately, I didn't get to personally go onto the Training Grounds VR attraction, but it was 3 vs 3 virtual reality, red vs blue. People who did try it out said it was a ton of fun and you could also check out the screens that they had around the venue that were showing what was going on inside of the arena. Now for those interested in the lore of Halo, there was plenty to offer, particularly the centerpiece called the Ring Experience. This was a tour through different facets of a Halo installation, covering some of the different things that go on inside of them. Our tour guide in particular was very funny and in great spirits the entire time, and you also had these headsets that you could wear that give you more information about the different things you were looking at. I definitely think it was worth checking out if you like Halo, but it's definitely a more subdued experience and not for those looking for something more action oriented. Oriented. It concludes with a video presentation inside of a planetarium style projection dome that was kind of dizzying but definitely fun to watch. It gave you a first hand look of the inside and outside of a Halo installation. It was also pretty cool to see life size replicas of the Flood and 343 Guilty Spark. The one thing that all the attractions I've mentioned so far have in common is having long lines. Every single one of these has a line to wait in, and honestly, this is probably the most grueling part of the entire experience. Some of these things had over two hour wait times, and that meant chipping away at what time you had left and having to pick and choose between what thing you'd do over another thing. The reason I didn't get to do the VR training grounds was because I had to wait in line so long for other attractions. This is something that I think is only going to be worse at other Halo venues, as the Orlando one didn't seem too booked with people compared to a city like Philadelphia that I imagine is going to be just loaded with attendees. This is one of those situations where you wish you had like a Nintendo Switch or 3DS or something on you to help pass the time. 
The final section I want to talk about is the Hall of History. Now this is an open area that does not need you to wait in line, you can just walk through it as you see fit, and it features several different life-size and scale model replicas of different things from the Halo universe, alongside giant walls of information. Now I found most of the information to be pretty generic and bare bones, and I felt like you could learn more looking at a single Wikipedia page, but it was still cool to see a life-size Master Chief and Elite and even the Warthog on display. Now what I didn't know until almost too late was that every one of these displays featured something interesting, an AR tag. Each one of these had augmented reality functionality that only could be accessed by using the Halo Outpost Discovery app. The problem is, they didn't really advertise this app all that well, so going into the event I didn't even know it existed. I found out about it from other attendees and only even did so because as I was looking at the displays, I saw someone else using the app to make an AR thing of Master Chief pop up. It was super cool and I wish I'd known about it beforehand because it's over 300 megabytes just to download and there's no Wi-Fi on site, meaning most people didn't even bother. And I think that really the app was most necessary to get everything out of this event. It also had experience points and things that you could track to help further your progress and get you exclusive physical rewards like dog tags that you could claim at the information kiosk. All in all, my thoughts on the Halo Outpost Discovery are that it was worth attending if you don't live too far away and really like Halo. If you live someplace really far off that's going to require you to travel and spend a lot of extra money just to attend, I don't know that it's necessarily worth it, but it's definitely worth it if you love Halo. The people working the event all had such good attitudes and referred to people as recruits, kind of holding up this narrative that everybody belonged to the UNSC and was a part of the Halo world. It's something simple and the kind of thing you'd expect at Disney World, but it was nice to have it in this unique Halo experience too. Also, while I didn't buy anything myself, there was a store on site that sold exclusive merchandise. Particularly cool was the Master Chief helmet that you could buy that had little glowing lights on the side of it. My biggest criticisms of the event definitely come from A, poor marketing when it comes to both spreading awareness of it and telling people what they should bring or expect while attending, and B, just outrageously bad lines. Like, when I have to wait over two hours just to do one thing, it really sucks. And there's nothing you can really do about it but wait, but at least the people who were there all had really good attitudes and were friendly to each other. If nothing else, I've more or less affirmed that true Halo fans are pretty nice people to one another, and that's a good thing. It seems that somewhere along the way, the Halo franchise has managed to build some sort of community that really loves each other, or at least loves the franchise enough to be happy to share it with one another. Which actually brings me to one other thing that I wish the event had, and that was more of a multiplayer presence. While there were some video games on site to play Halo games yourself, I really felt like there wasn't a big community aspect that Halo should be priding itself on even more so. Instead, this was really focused on the Halo campaign and lore more than anything else. Hopefully now you have a general overview of what to expect at the Halo Outpost Discovery, and if you're not able to attend, you at least have a taste of what there was to offer. Getting to experience themed attractions is really more of a thing that you see in Japan and not so much in the United States, so I'm curious to hear from any of you in the comments section about any personal experience you have with events like this one, where an IP that you loved got its very own event for a weekend or even just a day. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications here for the channel. I really appreciate it. And of course, check out some of the other videos we've got here too. Until next time, this is Stanpai. Thank you for watching. Adi adi arrivederci.